This is the AOS 5 Mini Quad and quite simply it's the best 5 inch frame and best tuned quad that I've ever flown. And that's quite a claim. So let me explain. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. This AOS frame is designed by Chris Rosser. Now he's an aerothermal engineer who specializes in computational modeling and he uses a completely scientific quantitative approach to frame design and tuning. And I really like this. This approach is what I sort of thought I did anyway, but after watching his channel, I realized I needed a bit of a rethink. Now there's a lot of test and analysis gone into the design of this frame. And I don't plan to repeat what Chris so eloquently covers on his channel. But what I'll try to do is summarize the standout points on the frame design and tuning approach that convinced me this was the way to go. And I encourage you to visit Chris's channel and I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, today I'll show you how I built this fantastic quad, the components I used and my experience tuning it the Chris Ross way. This build is based around the AOS 5 frame. It's just arrived from Canada and I've screwed it together already. And as you can see, it uses six millimeter thick arms with this arrangement of bracing. It's sort of like an X frame, but with additional bracing on these long arms at the front. And it's so mega, mega stiff. Everything about this design is deliberate. Nothing is guessed and it's all scientifically calculated tested and analyzed. Even the way the camera plates are designed are to help reduce any frame resonances. It really is a fantastic frame and it's beautifully produced. I'll be building this with the DJI air unit mounted in here at the back and these plates are designed to take the DJI camera at the front. And in my opinion, this is a much better camera than any of the other compatible cameras like the Cadex Polar, for example. The flight controller that I'm going to be using is the SpeedyB F7 V2 stack that I've reviewed before, and it's going to fit at the front here. And the motors, which haven't turned up yet, will be the iFlight Zing 2207-1855KV. So let's get on with this build. Well, there we go, as if by magic, it's all made up. And I have to say this frame is a pleasure to put together. It's beautifully cut. Everything fits just tightly and uh, it's perfect. As you can see here, uh, we're using the Ethics S3 props. These are very low mass, lightweight props. And I have got some other props I want to try, but these were the recommended ones. I've got one of my GoPro session mounts on the top here. It's a suspension mount which works quite nicely. And the antennas for the DJI air unit are mounted across this way to stop them flapping about to it, stop it introducing sort of additional resonances, if you like. One other thing I had to do when I did my first data collection flight, I was getting a lot of noise in the pitch axis this way. It was fairly, well, quiet that way. And I realized it was this air unit flapping up and down. So I put an additional cable tie on there just to hold it in place. And underneath, one of the really clever things is you would think with this type of arrangement of arm that replacing it would be difficult. But in fact, it's only two screws. So to take that arm out there, you just undo that screw, that screw, and it will just pull straight out and you can slot a new one in. And yeah, as you can see, these arms, six millimeter, this, this, yeah, this is unbelievably stiff. And everything fits in tightly, but beautifully. The nice thing is that you can get the motor wires to come in the back, which I'll show in a second. So you've got no cable sticking out here. Anyway, let's get the top off this and I'll give you a quick rundown of what's inside. With the top off, you can see it's a reasonably tight fit, but everything just fits inside the frame neatly. I'm using a Speedy B TX600 flight stack, which is basically the F7 V2. 
and we've got a 65 amp 4-in-1 ESC on the bottom. This is all soft mounted very nicely. And the beauty of this flight controller is I don't need to use a laptop. I can talk to this with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and I can set up everything. I have reviewed this on the channel before. It's a really good flight stack when you're out in the field trying to do some tuning. And up the front, we've got the DJI full-size camera. These are the best cameras. All the other smaller alternatives that have come from CADEX, they're pretty good, but you know, this is the best in my opinion. Got a full-size DJI air unit on the back here. As I said, I've mounted this. It was just a nice fit in there, quite tight. I had one piece of tape holding on, but it was just vibrating about and I was seeing a lot of noise on the logs. So I've just held that down with an additional tie wrap at the back. Antennas come out the side here and they're strapped onto the arms so that we don't get any additional resonances or unwanted resonances anyway. And then as I showed in the opener, we're using the Zing 2207 1855 KV because this is running on 6S. The batteries that I'm using are these GMB um, 1050 milliamp hour 6s um, these are rated 120c which is pretty good they are quite small and quite light and it gives me some degree of movement to get the c of g about right i've tried it one of these is a little bit heavy anyway so we've got the flight controller and the stack here in the center there, there is a 1000 microfarad, 35 volt low ESR capacitor. And just underneath it in that piece of heat and shriek, there's a spike suppressor. And I'll leave links to all those in the description. Just on this side, I've got a Vifly Finder 2, which fits in nicely, just solders on the top there. And other than the motor wires and that, there's, there's, hard, there's no soldering. This is all just sort of plugging connectors in to get it together. And talking of soldering, I'm not going to take this apart, but the way that the motor wires, I've got them running down here, you can run them in the front and round the back, so you can back solder them. That means you've got nothing sticking out this side, and you can just solder them in quite neatly. And I like that way of doing things. And that is about it. The only thing I was a little bit concerned about is this camera cable running so near to the gyro, but I think I'm going to pull that out of the way because I have seen some additional noise which I'm not quite sure what's causing that. I think it might be this. But I have been out and done the first data run with this and collected some data. Um, but even just on stock beta flight tune is really good. This is set up with RPM filtering. So everything's nice and simple. I had to reverse the motors because one was okay. Two, three and four all running the wrong way around. I'll show that um, in a later video, but you can change the motor direction without having to use BL Heli Suite or anything like that. You can just use the Speedy B app on your phone to change them. It's, um, it's a real breeze. And again, I've covered this in the review of the TX600 stack. And I've used this on a couple of builds now. It is really very good. Building this, as you can see, was pretty straightforward. And it's one of the benefits of using the air unit or the CADEX Vista with the DJI FPV controller. You don't need to solder in a receiver and worry about where you're gonna mount the antennas. Plus, the only soldering on this was the motors and the Finder 2 buzzer. Everything else is just plugs. And I find I'm doing more and more of that on my builds these days because the air unit i found is very reliable and gives me excellent range. So, on to the setup and tuning. Now, the way I normally do things is to get the motor RPM filtering set up first and then use the default beta flight PIDs and I dial in the rates that I know work for me and I just go and fly it. Generally, the default beta flight settings work great for five inch quads. And then what I'll do is start out by tuning the P term, just keep winding it up until it performs quite nicely, then dial in a D-term until I get the nice PD balance that works and it's flying nicely with no nasty wobbles, bounce back, hot motors or nasty sounding motors, that sort of thing. And then I'll generally flail about tweaking things to see if I can make it better and not being able to decide if the change I just made was any better or any worse. 
Now sometimes I'll use the black box logs and sometimes not, I just do it by feel. The Chris Rosser approach is a much more organised analytical way to tune, which means there's simply no guessing. And I was keen to give it a try. Now, as I've said before, I won't just repeat what Chris describes so well on his videos, but the summary sort of goes like this. First thing is to check the mechanicals of the quad, so there's no loose bolts that your flight, com your flight controller is soft mounted and so on. Then get the RPM filter set up. Then go and fly the quad on beta flight default PIDs and filters and rates, completely stock. And remember to turn on your black box logging. Then adjust the filters to get rid of the motor and the frame noise. And then you need to find the maximum degain. So you do that first. Then you find the right PD balance and then tune the feed forward for the best set point tracking, how quickly the quad follows the stick movements. And then you set your rates to suit personal feel and set the throttle resolution and then do any fine tuning that's needed. Now, I only had a couple of problems along the way when I followed this approach. When I looked at the black box logs after the first flight, all using the beta flight defaults, filters and rates, I noticed there was much more frame noise in pitch than there was in roll. Here's the roll noise, which is okay, but look how much bigger the pitch noise is. And it looks like there's some mode noise mixed in here as well, but it's mainly frame noise. And when I looked at the quad, I noticed the air unit could move up and down in the frame. Now, it's quite a snug fit in there, so I just put some tape round to hold it in place. But I put it near the front of the unit so I could get to the USB plug. But it was flapping up and down quite a bit. So I just fixed it in place with some 3M VHB pads and that brought the pitch noise down to about the same as the roll noise. There's still a bit more pitch noise, but I put that down to my flex suspended GoPro mount that I'd made. I can live with that though. The other problem I had was motor desyncs. I've covered how I fixed this in another video, and to be honest, I never used to get these. But I found they're appearing more often with low KV motors running on 6S. And it's a pretty easy thing to fix. So with that sorted, I got on with the tune following Chris's steps, and this is what I ended up with. With the final tune, here's a snap roll viewed in the black box analyzer. Bear in mind, my old man fingers aren't that quick, but this looks pretty good to me. The set point, and that's the green trace, is very closely followed by the gyro, the gray trace. There's a slight delay, but if I wound the feed forward up any higher to bring it back in line, there was much more overshoot at the end of the maneuver, and the motors were getting saturated for too long. So I'm happy with this, and to me, it feels very good indeed. And these are the settings that I ended up with. The master multiplier ended right up on its end stop, which has pushed the D-term much higher than I would normally set it to. PD balance and P and D gain didn't need changing, and the feed forward was cranked up to 1.8. I'd taken up a little bit higher, but as I said before, I was getting some overshoot on the end of the maneuver and the motors were saturating. I gradually wound up these values, checking motor temperatures and black box logs as I went. And during the tuning, I had D-min turned off. If you've got it on while you're tuning, it sort of masks the effects of the true D value. Most of the filters were turned off, apart from the gyro RPM filter and a bi-quad or second order low pass filter set to 105 hertz. Because the frame has got such low resonance, I could just gradually keep turning off the filters. Again, keeping a close eye on the motor temps, looking out for weird noises and so on in the logs. Remember that filters do a great job of removing noise, but they have a side effect that they introduce phase delay. So the less filters there are, the better response from the quad to stick inputs. And surprisingly, I was even able to turn off the dynamic notch gyro filter, something I'd never normally do. 
After four minutes of hard flying, well, as hard as I can fly anyway, with these particular settings, the motors are barely warm, and that's fantastic. This level of tune with these filters is something I would never attempt normally, and is a testament to the AOS frame design. So, over to the rates. I always tune using actual rates because they just make sense to my brain. I've scaled the throttle and added some expo, again, something I've never done before, and found that I didn't need to set the rates and expo as high as I normally would. And this feels really nice to me. I can't stress enough that you shouldn't just try and copy these settings. If I'd seen this setup on a quad without knowing the frame, I'd have predicted that the motors or the ESC would fry pretty quickly. I worked up to those values. And this is the nicest five inch quad I've flown. It's fast, it's responsive, there's no prop wash, no bounce back or any sort of weird behavior. And other than the obvious benefits to tuning this way, there's a few big takeaways for me. Leave the setting of your rates until the quad is properly tuned and calibrate your throttle and add some throttle expo. You won't believe how this makes modulating the throttle movements when you're trying to come out of a dive or something smoother and more accurate. Give it a try. Now, the other thing was the air unit antennas are fixed to the frame like this to prevent any additional resonance you get if they're hanging out the back. Initially, I was really worried this would affect the range, but as part of this flight, I flew diagonally across this field, which is almost 400 meters, and I had no problems at all. I'll do a proper test at some point, but with the air unit and these antennas, I've seen 500 meters with no issues in a clean environment, and I'm sure it will go an awful lot further. Also, Chris recommends the first data gathering flight should be on beta flight, PIDs, filters and rates, the stock default values. And there's nothing wrong with that for five inch quads because that's what the defaults are geared up for on beta flight. But in my experience, especially with any ducted cine whoops, the motors can get very hot very quickly on the defaults. So I'd recommend trying a quick flight, hover around in the garden for about 30 seconds land and check the motors. And if they're anything but stone cold, something's wrong. Check the build, check the mechanicals, and if that's all okay, dial the roll and the pitch D-term right down before you take it out on a data gathering flight. And apart from the good news that this is a fantastic quad, there's even better news. The AOS 3.5, a sub 250 gram version of this, has just been released and mine has been ordered. I'm really looking forward to reviewing that. And if that wasn't enough, there's a seven inch version in development. And you know how much I like seven inch quads. They're just so relaxing to fly. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you wanna see more like this, remember to subscribe, hit the bell down here to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.